Welcome to the Book Party Podcast. Join us as we journey into the world of books with Michael T. Prepare to be captivated by engaging interviews, insightful discussions, and fascinating stories. You'll discover new adventures and gain insight into the creative process of the authors themselves as they share their struggles and accomplishments. Now let's hear from Michael T. This is Michael T. Ladies and gentlemen, rebels and survivors, welcome to a truly remarkable episode of the Book Party Podcast. Today, prepared to be inspired, captivated, and journeyed through a true creative powerhouse, extraordinary life, and mind, we're about to dive into the world of author, illustrator, and survivor extraordinaire, Dan Hank. Prepared to be amazed as we explore the incredible story behind Dan Hank's latest novel, The Never Dead. This tale goes beyond fiction. Dan's life has been a roller coaster of resilience and triumph, surviving homelessness, car crashes, night fights, brain cancer, and unimaginable loss. Yet against all odds, he's emerged as a beacon of creativity and strength. The Never Dead is more than a book. It's a testament to the indomitable spirit of a man who's faced the darkest corners of life and emerged with a heart full of art, stories, and an unbreakable will to conquer adversity. Throughout this episode, we'll delve into the pages of The Never Dead, discovering the raw authenticity that only someone with Dan Hanks' life experiences could bring to the literary world. We'll also unravel the layers of his journey, how he transformed from a survivor to a successful tattoo shop owner, an accomplished author of novels and short stories, an illustrator whose work graces countless books, magazines, and albums, and even a podcast host. But that's not all. We'll gain insights into Dan's creative process the stories that have shaped his art and the unyielding spirit that drives him to create Get Ready for a Conversation that inspires you to tackle any obstacle that life throws your way. So buckle up for an episode that's unlike any other, whether you're an artist, a reader, or simply someone seeking inspiration. Join us as we sit down with incredible Dan Hank and explore the pages of The Never Dead. This is the Book par- book Party Podcast, where stories of resilience, creativity, and triumph come to life. Get ready to be moved, motivated, and uplifted. Dan, why don't you take it from here, fill in the blanks a bit, and tell our listeners about yourself. Thank you. Uh, you make me sound like a superhero there. You're talking me off so much. Um, yeah, I figure like everything in life is just a roadblock. Like I come up with what I want to do in life and I just keep going. And when stuff comes up that interrupts that, I, I try to figure out a way to get past it and keep going. So, you know, I like I originally wanted to be a combo artist. And then I was a political cartoonist for a couple of years. Then I went to art school and moved to New York City. Then I did album covers for a couple of years. Like I kept looking for a way to, to make it as an artist. And, you know, I started, you know, interviewing with book publishers. And I, like I, just everything that I want to do, I keep like going and going and going, you know, to try and make it work. Well, on your publishing journey, did you go the self-publishing route or the route finding an agent and an agency route. Well, I kind of, uh, I kind of loved it because, it, like, to, to just, you know, start the whole thing out. You know, I, I couldn't decide if I wanted to be an artist or if I wanted to be a writer. And then I read some of the more advanced graphic novels like Watchmen and Dark Knight, and I said, "Hey, I can do both." And then I moved to New York, and like I said, I interviewed with comic companies and it's actually really hard to do both. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do illustrations. And my ultimate goal is to do an illustrated novel. And 
then I had brain cancer and all that got put on a hold while I pretty much just recovered from brain cancer. And, and, you know, then I slowly started picking at my debut novel and my wife died in a hit run. So that kind of put a, a long break on stuff. And then a few months later, a guy got a hold of me and this is right when I, I started to get some tattoo fame. Like it was in all the magazines I refer to it as my 15 minutes of fame because, you know, I was everywhere. And there was a British writer who wrote a zombie novel and the main character was a tattoo artist. And so he wanted me to read the zombie novel and tell him if it was an accurate portrayal. And I read it and it wasn't, it wasn't even close, but he listened to me, he changed stuff. And at the end of the day, I said, Hey, you know what? I'm working on a novel. So, you know, I kind of got in with his publisher that way. So that, that was, you know, I kind of, I kind of took the, the quick route, like the, you know, like he got me, it, it was a, a smaller indie publisher and I've moved on since then, but that kind of like the, my wife dying, lit a fire in my ass, the, you know, the brain cancer, like, I just realized that life was short and I had to get going. Well, I noticed that, uh, you've been doing some editing. What about formatting? What do you mean, like, like uh, what do I do format wise? I mean, did you do your own formatting? Um, originally, when, when I started, like I said, that's when I was getting really big as a tattoo artist. So I was very, very busy. So I wrote it, but then I'd hire other people to edit it and format it. And, you know, and then I would submit it. And I remember the first draft I did, it was very rough. And I remember I submitted it and I got turned down. I was like, great. Uh, I was like, I, I really need to get, you know, somebody to do all this stuff. And I was really busy tattooing. So I hired somebody, I hired an editor and, you know, I had everything put together and I gave it to a company and pretty much it just went from there. Uh, okay. Well, why don't you take us to a point of what you would consider, especially on this, uh, this last book of what you would consider your worst author moment and tell us that story. Uh, I, I don't know if there was a single moment, like I've had ups and downs. I, I think most people do. Um, but what I thought is I thought that the hardest part would be writing the whole story and making a cohesive story that was readable. They captured what I wanted and everything. No, the hardest part is getting it published. And a lot of publishers, especially when you start out and you're a no name, don't want to, they, they don't want to give you any leeway. I was like, well, I'd really like to do the artwork. I'd really like to paint the cover. And they said, yeah, we don't allow that. I was like, well, I've been to art school. I've done comic books. I've done book covers. I've done like, you know, this is my forte. I can show you my portfolio. And I, I think a lot of indie publishers, you know, just as a rule, they don't let people do you know, any of their own artwork because uh, their thinking is twofold. One, they're thinking, Hey, you know, I love your writing. I, you know, I hired you for your writing. I hired you for your skill in that, you know, we don't know who this artist is. And often those beginning authors will just get a friend of theirs and they go, Oh, I, you know, I love this. I'll put this in the cover. And the publisher's like, that is not going to sell. No one is going to buy that book. And it's kind of embarrassing. So just as a rule, they don't let people do their own artwork. They also often have like their own little art team and you're intruding on their territory. So they just turn you down for everything. You know, so I, I remember that was a hurdle, you know, and then, you know, when they'll allow you to do their artwork, their guys want to like their art design guys want to, you know, screw around with it and you don't like what they do with it. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff that you deal with that I think, you know, when, when you first come on the scene, you know, all this stuff hits you and you're like, you know, is this normal? Why is this happening? But I think it kind of melts well, out as you go along. It's why a lot of people don't like to go to publishers in the first place because they feel they're losing control of their book because a publisher takes control and wants to change everything. And then they feel it's no longer their book anymore. And they start either going self-publishing or hybrid publishing. You know, there's a lot more of that going on these days. 
and if you go to a publisher, it can take a lot longer to get your book out there. Well, but well that, this is a valid concern. Choices. You know, that's a valid concern. I mean, th- there's kind of two things to go into. One is the downside is often the publisher does try and control you. Like I, I've had publishers do extensive edits and send them back to me. I'm like, well, that's a subjective edit. It's not like a literary edit. So if you want to be a writer, how about you write your own book and let me write mine? So there, that's the downside of it. But the upside of it is you do need a good editor. And sometimes having it published by a more mainstream publisher forces you to edit and format it so that you know it's more agreeable to the general public. Right. Okay. Well, let's flip this a little bit about what I like to call an epiphany moment. Some people say an aha moment, a light bulb moment. Maybe an incredible light bulb went off in the head moment. You could have been doing anything else other than writing. And all of a sudden, this big wow or light bulb went off in your head. And you said, man, I got to get a pen and paper. I got to write this down right now. So you don't lose the idea. You don't, it doesn't fade this great epiphany. Uh, Do you have a moment like that? Well, I had a moment where I realized that I had to get this done. I had to get this out. Like the kind of the core of the first story that I put out and everything I put out, you know, kind of like exists in the same continuum. So they're, they're all vaguely connected, but the core of what I wanted to put out was a story that I'd had for a long time. I went through various incarnations, like I was going to make it a, a graphic novel, and I did comic pages, and when they interviewed with like DC Comics, you know, I'd bring them that. Um, but eventually it evolved into, you know, an illustrated story, and I was kind of like peeking at that, and then my wife died and hit a run. And that I think that really, you know, told me that life is short. I, I really have to get on this right away. And then once I got on that, it's been kind of nonstop ever since. Okay. What, what is, uh, let's turn this up to today. What is the one thing that you are the most fired up about? You can say you're the most excited about right now today. Um, uh, what writing wise, you mean? Sure. In your professional life, your writing life, what is the one thing you're the most excited about today? Well, I think things are really exploding for me, you know, in the, like, it, it kind of, it's almost the same as when I got into tattooing. It's like you get in it and you, you try everything and you, you push and you push and it seems like you're going nowhere. And then all of a sudden, like that damn breaks. And, you know, I've been going to conventions and I've been doing podcasts, and I've been doing interviews, you know, both paper and audio interviews. And, you know, it feels like you're you're plugging away in the darkness, and then all of a sudden, it just starts to work. And people start to recognize your work, you know, publishers start to get a hold of you. Um, the latest book I put out is an anthology, and some of the people were, like, asking me if they could be a part of it. Like, I didn't even have to ask them, they asked me. And, and that was a great feeling. Absolutely. This is Michael T. Thank you for being with us this morning. We invite you to go to bookpartypodcast.com, hit that subscribe tab on top, and scroll down to the icon of your choice, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, or Odyssey, where you can find us on one of your favorite platforms. Download us and follow us there. Please leave a review. Don't forget to sign up for our video newsletter and get the latest information on our upcoming shows. Now, Dan, we're going to enter the lightning round. In the lightning round, we're going to ask four pointed questions for four pointed answers. Before you ever became an author, what was holding you back from becoming an author in the first place? I think the main thing was I didn't know how to break through. I knew what I wanted to do, but I lived in the South. I was very punk rock. My parents are very religious, very conservative. And so nobody, nobody had any faith in me. I remember my guidance counselor in school telling me, get ready for a cure of pumping gas because that's all you're ever going to do. 
Okay. What was the best advice? Now, this is during your writing. What was the best advice you had ever received? Take criticism. And when people say no, you know, or not interested, it, it's not like a final judgment. It means you need to work on something more presentable to bring back to them. Okay. Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. Whenever I come to a blockade, I don't try and force my writing. What I do is I take a break and I go for a run or I go for a bike ride or something completely different so that the endorphins are rushing through my brain as I'm, you know, looking at serene scenery all around me. And I always come up with good ideas by the time I come back. Okay. Could you share an internet resource with our listeners that you use with your writing? I don't know if it's a wonder share or, but I've, I've, there, there are audio seminars that you can take. Um, I took uh, Alan Moore audio seminar. I took a uh, uh, Stephen King audio seminar and they have great tips on writing and you can just download it. You can listen to it in your car or whatever, but I, I would say that's the single greatest thing I've done. Well, Dan, we're going to enter the grand finale now. So why don't you tell our listeners maybe a way to get in touch with you, a way to follow you, a way to find your book, but take your time and tell our listeners all about this book. <laughs> um, the latest book that I just put out is an anthology. So it has two stories by me and then it has 13 other authors as well. Um, they're all kind of along the lines of like Twilight Zone or Tales from the Crypt or The Outer Limits, kind of that old school, not quite over the top, but still like you're, you're vaguely uncertain. Like there's a little bit of like speculative fiction, a little bit of sci-fi, a little bit of horror, a little bit of mystery, you know, but I, I try to keep that vibe going throughout the entire book. And I remember when people were submitting stuff to me, there were a couple of people that had turned down and I said, Hey, this isn't a bad story. This really is not, you know, in, along the vibe of the book. This, you know, is it can't grow with what else we have going on. So that that's what I, I try to do. It's now available. It's, uh, it's on Amazon. It's Barnes and Nobles. It's available in, in paperback, Kindle, hardcover, audio. You know, it, it so far it's done really well. Put it up. Uh, I just recently put in, uh, there was an ebook fair that Barnes and Nobles ran and I won the fair. Well, Dan, we thank you so much for being here with us today, opening up to us. And I'm sure our listeners appreciate that too. Again, this is Michael T. And I thank you for being with us this morning to all our listeners. I would like to invite you to go to bookpartypodcast.com, hit that subscribe tab on top, scroll down to the icon of your choice, you can find us on one of your favorite platforms, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, or Odyssey. You can download and follow us there. Please leave a review, and don't forget to sign up for our video newsletter and take the latest information of our upcoming shows. Book Party Podcast is owned and operated by MTM Legacy Publishing. This is... Michael T. signing off. You must not miss our next episode as we delve into a world of inspiration, entertainment, and thought-provoking insights. Join Michael T. on the next Book Party podcast and experience a new adventure, a new story, and a complete immersion into the world of Pages Unveiled, Chronicles of the Writing Journey.